wake up If you're mentally weak, y'all Spiritually they feast, y'all You better check your masters and your motherfucking sheep, y'all If you're mentally weak, y'all Spiritually they feast, y'all You better check your masters and your motherfucking sheep, y'all Thin or real? Yeah, I know what you mean. I know um, what you mean. I, I'm the same way. I'm like, I'm not making any real serious predictions, but I was just pointing out that they are staging something in Times Square with the pro-Palestine protesters. Something to keep an eye on. But I was just noting how a few a few days ago they turned off all 27 billboards, which they've never done. And in Matrix Reloaded, they just happened to need to shut down 27 blocks in order to go through the door to where the architect was. So I'm thinking, maybe I'm reading into it, but just putting it out there for anybody listening, that there may be something interesting this New Year's. So look for, you know. Are you, are you along, along, along something, some type of... Hey, actually, we're kind of... what it seems like. Yeah, hold on a second. We're kind of cutting out here. Give me just a second. Let me see if I can fix this call. Maybe it's a bad connect. We might have to have you call right back. Yeah. You hear me? Yeah, we'll have to have you call right back. It's actually cutting out. All right. Okay, yeah, he's cutting. We'll go ahead and put it back in. Hey, check this out. Uh, this is posted in Discord by Travis. Lakers gave fans a strange toy. Toy helicopters before Bryant's last game. So before Kobe Bryant's crash, they handed out a Kobe Bryant helicopter toy. And a couple of weeks ago, we were actually playing this clip from a commercial where... Ye throws, or rather he throws, where Kobe kills Ye in a helicopter. Hey, what's up, caller? I think this should be better. All right, man. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Much better, much better. Yeah, so um, I was actually interested when I heard you talking about the uh, the France thing. Remind me what year that was. Uh, The France thing? With the, with the truck running over the people oh, yeah, or yeah. whatever. I, yeah, that was that? 2017. Okay. Okay, and what what year was the year of the uh, Boston bombing? What year was that? I believe Boston bombing was 2013. Okay, see, I I don't know, bro. I'm like, you know, on my little mystical path and shit, so I'm always looking at it through, like, trippier observations and shit, but um, I definitely think something happened within myself back then um, because I remember when I heard about the Boston bombing, I don't know what it was, bro. And I, like I said, I wasn't necessarily a conspiracy theorist, but I did always have an open mind to other shit. But I was so one-track minded, I never thought about this type of stuff, right? But I just remember me having this like inner feeling of like, okay, something just seems off now. Like it wasn't sadness anymore. You know what I'm saying? And then when the whole thing happened, I guess that would have been years later. By the time it happened in France, and then like, um every time I would just get this like, you know, information about what was going on. Cause I wasn't a TV watcher or anything. And they just felt more and more like there was more to it. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I find it interesting when I hear you talk about how you were already starting to call it out back then. Cause I've always been curious on when this started for you, as far as taking this angle. And then I, you know, I try to, uh, you know, use it as a mirror to my, my experience. And I'm like, I find it really just strange how back then just, I don't know what it was, man. I think something did happen um, that is out of my realm of understanding back in 2012 when it was supposed to be the whole, like, you know, end of this world or whatever. And I, I, I literally think that there was some type of spiritual aspect that took place that slowly began to started waking a lot of people up. And then something happened around those eclipses of 2017 i think some shit was really ramped up this is just inner standings for me meditating and just feeling this shit but when i heard you bring up france i couldn't help but call in to be like damn i can't believe that okay. you've been starting to see it since then bro like that is that's a while ago now you know what i mean yeah look, look when like when the boston thing happened i thought it was real i didn't i mean i thought everything was real but I started. I thought it was just so dirty in politics that they were actually executing people for political ends, and I thought the world was just more right. savage and dark and evil than I ever imagined. But when I started to question the big picture and the world view, and I started to see the fakery, it alleviated a lot of that darkness, and I, I kind of like, in a way, it was like um, uh, everything became lighter. 
it really is um, a, a dark vision they've given us. And so it was kind of nice to be liberated from that. And it was kind of funny. Conspiracy theories at the time weren't dark or associated with hate. It was always kind of like almost humorous, like um, like in a way uh, poking fun at the seriousness of everything, recognizing that we don't actually yeah. know as much. And it wasn't like a threat to anybody's existence that we were questioning these things. And they made it so. Now being a conspiracy theorist is to be some kind of a radical. But I didn't begin to unravel yeah. the fakery of it all until about 2017. That's when I realized, okay, it's literally fake. What made that happen within you, though? Like, like I can sit there and vividly remember me starting to meditate and doing all this shit. Like, what, what was it for you that made you be like, were you always paying attention? Were you always, like, researching things? Like, what, what shifted in you to where you, you became, like... Yeah, that's okay. So, since you're asking, talking, it had yeah. nothing to do with media because I wasn't paying attention to the news on that level. I, I mean, I believed it all on the like blue pill basic level, but um, to be honest, I was having a lot of synchronicities, a lot of intuitive insights about situations and people, and I realized that when I try to act on that, I would find resistance, and that people wouldn't, um, they wouldn't allow for that. Like a lot of people didn't take your intuition or my gut instinct about somebody at face value. They just misread it. And I, I made a decision that I was going to trust my own instincts and intuition above anybody from then on because something had happened where I was proven right just too many times in a row. But as soon as I made this conscious yeah. decision to go with my intuition, specifically about a situation where I ended up preventing something bad from happening, but I realized I have to trust this. And as soon as I made that decision, it was like all of a sudden information that came to me that I would have ignored, I actually started just not reflexively ignoring it. For example, somebody said, don't pay attention to the people saying that nobody died. It's just distraction. And I started realizing, okay, maybe when something piques my interest, I need to look at it and not listen to the somebody saying, pay no attention. So I think I just started paying more attention and, and paying attention to my own perceptions and not allowing it to be overridden by consensus. Well, yeah, I mean, that that's, I guess that's just the hardest thing for people to do is to even like allow yourself to fathom something being fake like that. You know, what really, what, what really gets me is, um, so in 2017 was when I moved away from where I was living for like 30 years. And right before I moved, I had recorded an artist in my, in my home studio who uh, made a song about the, uh, I forgot what it was, the gay nightclub that, pulse. you know, had a, well, uh, the pulse. Yeah, pulse. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So I'm, I, at the time I'm, see, I, I've been detached from media since like 2005, just through this, like one time I was watching the news and I just felt all this anxiety and I was just like, I don't think this shit's fucking good for me, but it wasn't anything other than that. I didn't think it was fake or anything. I just went on my own little path and I, and so I kind of ditched the TV. So I wasn't really tied to like the news every night and it wasn't like in my nervous system. It wasn't like, but the narratives were still coming to me. You know, I would hear about these shootings and I would hear about this and I'd hear about Trump's racist and all this shit. And so it was interesting for me because I remember recording this song when that was going down and this guy wrote a song about it and all this stuff. And another guy came through a different artist he wrote his own song about it called the uh, mass shooter right and like i'm making music just because people are paying me to do it and it's about these topics and i even like rap on one of the hooks and by the time the vegas thing had happened i had moved away and i had already started like feeling a really i don't know what i don't know how to explain it bro but it's like this crazy like you say you know it's just your intuition and i was like okay, there's really something up, but I still wasn't able to put my finger on it until I came across you years ago, bro. And that's when I was like, okay, that's, that's what the fascinating. Fuck here. You know okay. What I'm this is fascinating here because you can be, you know, uh, this, this is like, I and mean, this is all genres of music where you'll find that the music that's out there. That's, that's the dominant influence always speaks from the perspective of the world stage as presented with all its built in yeah. assumptions. Yeah. And, so even yeah. if you're not aware of it, you might be inadvertently repeating agitprop and propaganda. And I described how oh yeah, this is the lie world order, and it makes you a liar 
if you adhere to it. And so you might have a pure heart and you're, you, you join the media, you become a news reporter, you're reading teleprompters. Even if you're not consciously lying, you're speaking from an edifice of lies. That's just how it works. Right, you have to right. step it's, off it. It's, it's, yeah. the same with, it's the same with the medical industry. And they've done that with every facet of humanity because it's the same with education. I'm not saying all those uh, teachers are evil or in on it, but y'all are part of the problem. You know what I'm saying? And I realized, like, I was part of the problem just by, like you said, just pure intentions. They were just like, yeah, we're writing some music about this. I was like, cool. I facilitated. He said, I'd like to hear you on this because you'd sound, and I'm like, cool, whatever. But I wasn't even really like, you know, I wasn't advocating for anything. But yet now somebody does some, you know, history on me. They'd be like, oh, look, he's rapping about some shit, but... That was because a player was plugged in, even though I wasn't a TV consumer, even though I didn't watch the news and shit, it still got to someone and I like myself. And that's why when I'm real with myself, that's what I love about this uh, path of just, you know, knowing thyself because you have to be accountable for everything. You know what I mean? You, there is nobody to can't point no fingers at anybody. You, you got to take responsibility. You got to take accountability for your life. It's almost, I, I believe that it's like the first stage of self-initiation, even though I, I wasn't trying to initiate myself into anything, but I do understand what they're putting these masons through just through natural law and me waking up to whatever the fuck it was that said, Hey, you should really learn to meditate because your mind is your biggest adversary in your fucking life. You know what I'm saying? And then once I cleared that up, within a fucking year, I went from helping people make music about this mainstream narrative to me being like, okay, there's something up with the mainstream narrative. And then by the time the fucking uh, 2020 came around, I was so wise just through gnosis and validating content like yours that, you know, Wait, aren't was, you glad? I mean, beautiful the timing. Go. Like, had you not had that insight, you might be doing mainstream stuff oh, about, so like, great. like Eminem yeah, was dude, doing. I'm so great. I'd be like fucking Black Lives Matter right now and some shit. You know what I mean? I'd be right. It'd be all the same shit. You know what I'm saying? Your creativity like, would be yeah. hijacked to serve against you, and, and that's what they do. I think that's how it works. It's like the political horseshoe thing where you try to follow your own conscience and you break away from the mainstream and. The further you go away from it, and the more active you get, the more it turns you back into the matrix. And I kind of think that you have to step outside of the entire model to see it. And it's an immersive illusion. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's immersive. You have Dude, to consciously step out. You're so right. And it's so crazy how they can uh, how they can really hijack your perceptions, even when you think you're the last one who should be under any spell. Because, like, you know, I say all this stuff about me with rap music growing up and me idolizing it and shit yet there was still something that shook my spirit about the content of it all right like i remember being 18 years old and having conversations with my friends who were like a year or two younger than me and i don't know where it came from but i i was just being honest in my observation and i was like i really feel like they're dumbing us down through music and all my friends looked at me like i was crazy so I was like, okay, whatever, I'll just be the weirdo, but this move, this music is getting more simple, it's getting more redundant, it's getting more and more toxic, and now now I would take that music over whatever the fuck they're calling this shit today, and I'm not even trying to be the old head, like, get off my yard, I'm just, it's my observation, this is demonic sonics right now, like, back in the day, it was hidden through these incredible voices and incredible, you know, talents and stories and all this shit, and nowadays, you don't even get the fucking fake-ass you know, charisma out of artists anymore. You just get whoever can fucking pollute your consciousness the most and then whoever is the next puppet up. So we, we don't even get to really like, you know, back in the day they gave us real fucking narratives and stories of people. And now it's just like, here's this pill popping fucking clown and he's going to be here for this summer. But um, yeah, bro, it's, it's, it's crazy because as aware as I've been of music, I still allowed music to be one of the biggest interferences in my fucking life because they, we don't realize it's like this organism that gets into our perceptions, man. And your perceptions are your filter, but like everything that you're gauging life on. And when you've got these distorted perceptions on women and distorted perceptions on more morality and distorted perceptions on everything, because you 
glorified this culture that you thought was fucking cool. Like I said, bro, it really is like coming out of a fucking cult and shit. So yeah, I, I was, like how you say I was totally into know they have you. like movies, for example. Think about all the movies you watched, and all the every single movie. Just like I mentioned, how if your frame of reference is with is from the edifice of lies, everything is going to uh, stem from that. So like if there's a movie, maybe it's just some mind mindless entertainment, but everything in it is reinforcing the mainstream lies that set your frame of reference. It's always programming you. And I was always into movies. Filmmaking is something that I, I studied. I, I wanted to, you know, be more involved in that and animation and stuff. But I realized I was absorbing a lot of movies and just the propaganda mindlessly, thoughtlessly. And now I still love movies, but now I watch them just more consciously. And I'm aware of, right. and, I, and I appreciate the artistry just as much as I did before. But now I see these other right. levels of it, and I'm a little more wary of what's coming out. Right, like like you have to, because I'm going to be honest, I, I came across that uh, movie that everybody's been breaking down. Um, Leave the World talking Behind? About yeah, it yeah. Leave yeah. the World Behind. I came across that, like, honestly, by, by accident. It just was recommended to me after watching a Christmas movie with my daughter. So it's kind of weird that they're like, hey, watch this fucking movie. And I'm, I'm not going to lie. I thought it was a fire ass movie. Yep. Now, as I'm watching it, I'm sitting there telling my my daughter like, "Oh God, look at them telling me to obey NASA. Look at this. Look at that. Oh, you catch this." And then I caught myself. I was like, "Okay, shut the fuck up and just enjoy the movie, and then break it down after." And then it was like I started seeing this movie pop up everywhere. So yeah, I can still enjoy the craft and I can still enjoy, um, you know, the art of it all. But it's just a. Uh, it's a it's it's a crazy realization when you realize the thing you love the most and you supported the most was probably the most detrimental to your perceptions and that's really the most important aspect of ourselves is how are we perceiving this life of ours you know what I mean and where we're at in it yeah it's a really the introspective movies. thing to to re realize where you've been um, deceived and then recognizing that you can be duped one of the things I ask in Auto Hooksology 101 is the question are you dupable because if your answer is no, then you're probably majorly tricked because we are all trickable. You're probably grew. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you know. Well, anyway, hey, appreciate the call very much. And um, if you want to go ahead and post links to anything that you've put on your channel, please do. There's a lot of people here who probably want to subscribe uh, to your work, and we'll go ahead and um, share those yeah, links. But, sure, yeah, man. by all means. Sure. Yeah, like I said, this is, uh, this is Mr. Tommy Oz in the comments. I'll, I'll post one right now, but... Always good to talk to you, bro. I appreciate it. Likewise. All right. Have a great night. All right. So there you can see you in too. the comments. Um, he'll likely post it here. Anyone, if you want to click the link, um, I'll also share it. Wake up. If you're mentally weak, y'all, spiritually they feast, y'all, you better check your masters and your motherfucking sheep, y'all. If you're mentally weak, y'all, spiritually they feast, y'all, you better check your masters and your motherfucking sheep, y'all. Oh shit, no shit, boy, he can go shit. Never did fuck with the fake or the hoe shit. Oh shit, no, this game when I spoke this. Getting evident that I got a lot of noses.